we need. And oftentimes it is difficulty and failure that teaches us how to learn to trust him. God is going to send us enough difficulty and hardship in our life. He's going to send us enough trials and tribulations in order to teach us to trust him. How would we ever know how to trust him if we didn't face circumstances and situations in which we didn't feel helpless and hopeless and lost apart from the divine intervention of God. You can trust him for every single need. You can trust him to protect you in every circumstance. And one of the scriptures he keeps laying on my heart all through these years is no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And over and over and over again, his weapons have been tossed at me for one reason or the other. Over and over, he sent me back to that passage. You, you're going to believe what I've said rather than what you see and what you feel. If you'll just remember that, believe what he says rather than what you feel or what you see. Because if you believe what you feel, it can be very erroneous. If you believe what you hear, it can be very erroneous. If you believe what God says, you never, never go wrong doing what's right. The third lesson that I think is so very important is this. And that is learning to wait upon God for his direction and his time. Here's what I've discovered. When he says wait, it's probably for one of three reasons. Number one, because I'm not ready for what he has. It may be that what I believe is the will of God is the will of God. But the timing is not my timing. It's his timing. He says no wait. And sometimes when we wait a while, we think, God, I've waited long enough. He says no wait. Are you going to believe what I say? Are you going to believe, are you gonna believe what, you, what you see? Are you going to believe what you feel? When God says wait, I cannot tell you how important this is. This is one of the most difficult lessons to learn, but it is one of the most important. Don't budge until God gives you permission to move. One of the reasons is because we're not ready. A second reason is because the circumstance that he is preparing for us, that circumstance isn't ready. You and I can't rush God. We can't hurry God. When God puts a situation and circumstances together, he puts it together in his perfect timing and his perfect way. Oftentimes when God says, no, don't move. Why, Lord? Just trust me. Don't move. But God, look at all these things that are taking place and time's going by. Don't move. Trust me. Don't move. A third reason is because God has something better. Here we are waiting for this, and God has something absolutely better over here that you and I have never dreamed of, never thought about. And so I would say lesson number three, very important lesson, learn to wait for God's direction and for God's timing in your life. The next one I would simply say is one that uh, is so very important, and oftentimes we think, well, principles and lessons that, that God will teach us, uh, how, would, how could this possibly be one of them? But it's one of them because... As I think about over the years, one of the most profitable things I ever have ever done, I learned very early in life. And so what is this principle? This principle is this. Give generously to the Lord's work. Here's what I've discovered. If I, if I hold on, if I become attached to anything in life materially, what I'm doing is I'm holding on to something. If I'm holding on to something, God can't put anything in the hands that are, that are tightly fisted like this. When I open my hands to God and say, Lord... Whatever I have is yours. You can take anything you want. You can take as much as you want. All you've got to do is to tell me what you want, and here it is. If I do that, you know what? I know that I'm not, I'm not attached to anything. Anytime you get, get, get to holding on to anything and money becomes a priority in your life, mark this down, you're going to lose it. God is going to see to it that you lose it. Money is not our goal. Our goal is to walk obediently before God. But if you and I will walk obediently before God and follow his principles of giving, here's what he will do. He will prosper you in ways you'll never be able to imagine.